You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. 24 hours have passed since the death of this Gwinnett County Corrections Officer, and right now there are more questions out there. Authorities hope this new video will lead to some answers. The city of Atlanta reaching out to the community for help as it tries to protect the city's children and teenagers. We have a look at the conversation. Well, we're looking at heavy rain pushing in our direction, folks. There could be a couple thunderstorms around as well. We're tracking it for you and hour by hour coming up. Right now, police continue their search for the person who killed a Gwinnett County Corrections officer. Yeah, police are releasing new videos showing a possible suspect. Liza Lucas has the latest. Flags here in the Correctional Center are flying at half staff this morning as the search for Officer Scott Reiner's killer continues. Police vowing to work this case as hard as they can. Their main lead at this hour is this surveillance video. Police say this is the man they believe shot 59 year old Reiner as he arrived to work Tuesday morning. At this point, it's not known if this was a random act or if Reiner was specifically targeted. Police hoping someone will recognize the suspect by the person's clothing or build. Again, as the search for the suspect continues this morning, police are leaning on the public for help. They are asking anyone with information or video of the area to come forward. In Lawrenceville, I'm Liza Lucas, 11 Alive News. Continuing with your 11 minutes of nonstop news, more security is now required at convenience stores and gas stations in DeKalb County. Local leaders say it is all to better protect you. Commissioners voted to pass an ordinance that requires the installation of HD surveillance cameras to help curb crime. The cameras must record every part of the property 24 seven. Under the new law, store owners also have to hand over video to police if they ask for it within 72 hours of a crime. Owners have until June of next year to install those cameras at their own expense. This morning, we're learning more details about the man accused of stabbing a grandmother to death in Buckhead. Joe Rucker show Antonio Brown had run ins with Atlanta police in 2019 and 2020. He's also accused of grabbing his own mother by her neck while also holding a knife. They eventually reached a plea deal. Brown is sitting in jail, accused of stabbing Eleanor Bowles to death and trying to steal her SUV. Families of the victims in the infamous Atlanta child murders are demanding answers. They want full DNA testing results finally released. The case was reopened in 2019. Last year, Atlanta police said it was using a forensics company in Utah to retest DNA evidence. 11 Alive reached out to APD and the forensic company doing the testing, but both said there were no updates to report. Amazon's nationwide cuts are hitting Metro Atlanta. According to our partners at the Atlanta Business Chronicle, Amazon is closing its Kennesaw facility around April 1st. About 219 people work there, but they've gotten offers to go to other local Amazon facilities. That was a look at your top headlines. Bringing the umbrella this morning, Chesley. Yeah, you're going to need that bonnet too, maybe. Maybe we're looking at uh, <laughs> she shakes her head. We're looking at uh, most of the skies on the outside. A few sprinkles up here to the north. We could see some isolated showers uh, starting this morning into early afternoon, uh, becoming more scattered this afternoon than widespread as we head toward the evening. That rain not that far off to the west of us, as you can see. Now, more of that heavy rain will get in here later on tonight. Now, we're anticipating some flooding to take place with that rain. Heavy rain is going to be out there, especially for our far northwestern counties. We're talking Dade Walker County over to Murray County, down through Gordon County, and also in into uh, Floyd County, which includes the Rome area. Anywhere from one to three inches of rainfall, certainly possible through today. That could swell our banks of uh, our rivers, streams, and our creeks. You're looking at uh, by noon, temperatures right around 50 degrees. 53 will be our afternoon high. Maybe struggling to get that high. We'll drop back down to 49 degrees again with a few thunderstorms coming into the area. Probably around eight, nine o'clock hours when we'll start to see a lot of that. What's happening out there right now is starting to weaken up here to the north. So that's a good sign for us there. You see the strength of the storms are still down here to the south. And I suspect that's where it's going to stay as we head through much of the day. It's typically between the warm and the cold front where we get uh, the most severe weather, and that's what we're seeing there. As long as this warm front stays south of our area, then we'll be looking at just some rainfall pushing in. And you can see from the Storm Prediction Center, it keeps the level three threat down to the south. The Storm Prediction Center has uh, elevated the level one threat 
almost into Atlanta. That means isolated strong severe thunderstorms are possible in that particular area, again, just south of the city. But I think for the most part, we're going to stay on the just rainy side, and that will be a threat, of course, with the flooding that will be out there. Scattered showers early on. We'll see if this wedge holds together. Temperatures right now in the 40s. Again, if we only make it up to about 50, 51 degrees, I suspect that this line, as it begins to push in, unless that warm front is to the north of us, will start to die out. And that's what we'll see with those scattered showers pushing into the area. You can see this is by 1130 tonight. All right, so it will be more of an overnight scenario for us. It'll be during the wee hours of the morning that this continues to pass through. Uh, really, so we'll start to wrap up as we start our morning drive on Thursday. We'll keep the clouds in place for the morning, but by the afternoon, that clears out with the sunshine back in. I think with the sunshine, temperatures will heat up close to 60, but then we'll start to cool off as that cold air behind the front continues to push in. So that by the time we get to the weekend, look at temperatures, high temperatures only in the 40s, and we'll be flirting with those overnight lows down at or below the freezing mark. Continuing with your 11 minutes of nonstop news with new details in Atlanta's efforts to curb violence. Dozens of people gathered at City Hall last night to share their ideas and possible solutions. Jerry Carnes has a closer look for us. Among the people demanding action are some who are still upset about the violence that led to the deaths of a 12 and 15 year old here near Atlantic Station. And then there's the woman who knows what it's like to suffer the loss of a loved one due to gun violence. Increase in violence is heartbreaking. Aliyah Strong was among the many who packed a room at Atlanta City Hall to address members of a public safety committee, pleading with city leaders to act in the wake of deadly violence. Strong lost her fiance in February. Ty Ross was a security guard at Atlanta's Encore Hookah Lounge. He was only 28 when a bullet took him from Strong and her young child. My son and I had to go through therapy and having to move and just process. And Over the past year, Atlanta has been confronted by the faces of young people who have fallen victim to violence, some of them killed by the very young. The meeting at Atlanta City Hall allowed a flow of ideas. What do they want? You know, what are they interested in? What do they need? Among the ideas on the table, a 7 p.m. curfew for people 17 and under. City council members are also considering legislation that would outlaw loitering in large public places. Council member Keisha Waits proposed the curfew legislation. I can tell you that we are meeting with nonprofits, stakeholders, uh, education uh, leaders uh, to find solutions. Solutions that are needed to ease the violence and the grief. Members of the community are suggesting that the city of Atlanta offer more activities for young people and added resources for single parents. It's been 10 years since the tragedy at Sandy Hook Elementary in Connecticut. A gunman killed 26 people, and today survivors of the shooting are coming together to remember this tragedy. Do you remember anything she said, Julia? One thing that she said is that she loved us, going back and like thinking about it. like That was like the first thing that I would think about. Next on the Today Show, the powerful connection between a teacher and two of her students that were first graders on that day. Today, Georgia Representative Lucy McBath, she is expected to speak on the House floor to remember the tragedy. Since the December 14th attack, a new school has been built. For the seventh time this year, the Fed is expected to announce yet another interest rate hike today. It's expected to be less than one percentage point. The interest rate impacts everything from loans and mortgages to credit cards, student loans, and even your savings account. But the Fed's hopes the trade-off will be lower prices. Well, if you're going out this afternoon, know that there could be a couple sprinkles around the area. Looking at isolated showers around by the noon hour. Temperatures right around 50 degrees. All right, we have an easterly wind that's going to make it feel even cooler out there. By the time we get to 3 o'clock, more of those scattered showers around. So that easterly wind at about 10 miles per hour. Gusts could be a little bit higher than that. 53 will be our afternoon high temperature for today. By 6 o'clock, we're looking at uh, temperatures dropping back down to around 50, but that rain will start to become heavy on us as well. Again, with that easterly breeze, and stay heavy with a couple of thunderstorms even as we head into the overnight. The winter of the voice is Bryce Leatherwood. He's bringing it home. Bryce Leatherwood is crowned the voice season 2020 winner. 2022, the champion last night. His victory, Bryce Leatherwood earns $100,000 and a recording contract with Universal Music. Way to go, Bryce. What a cool name, too. Exactly. Bryce Leatherwood. I want to be Crash Leatherwood. Yeah. Blake was like, that's like a true country name. Yeah. Right. Leatherwood. Got a voice that comes along with that, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Let's hear it. Crash. Sing us out. Two seconds. No way. <laughs>